morning. I'm Daniel Pearson. Thank you very much for joining us for East Texas Live on this Thursday. We begin today with some breaking news out of Maryland. Three people are dead after a female gunman opened fire inside of a warehouse. A live look from Aberdeen, which is about 30 miles north of Baltimore. Early reports from the area say multiple people had been shot. It's unknown or it's now known. I should say just a little while ago that those people have been killed. As you see, ATF as well as FBI agents are searching the scene. We do know at this time that a female gunman was reportedly injured by authorities. She is currently in the hospital right now and we are waiting for a live press conference to begin to update us with more on this information. It is set to begin in just moments, and once it does, we will dip back into coverage there and hear the latest information from this developing breaking news story out of Maryland. Again, three people shot and killed. And again, we will continue to follow this story not only on our newscast, but also on our website, EastTexasMatters.com. Something you should know right now, an oil spill causing headaches for drivers in Longview this morning. Parts of FM 2087 are closed due to a fuel spill from an 18 wheeler. It happened just before the overpass at I 20. Traffic cannot drive over the FM 2087 overpass due to the spill. Hazmat crews are on scene conducting cleanup operations. Again, if you do need to drive in that area, please avoid that road. Right now, a bitter back and forth as Judge Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation remains in crisis. The Supreme Court nominee's accuser, Christine Four, has until Monday to testify. But her lawyers aren't backing down, saying the FBI needs to investigate the sexual assault allegations brought against Judge Kavanaugh. They're now also asking that additional witnesses be called into the proceeding. The Senate GOP's counteroffer testify next Monday or we'll move on without you. As NBC's Tracy Pot shows us, at the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue, President Trump is urging Ford to testify and dismissing the need for FBI involvement. There's now a deadline, 10 a.m. tomorrow, for Dr. Christine Blasey Ford to submit documents if she plans to testify Monday. Either in an open session or a closed session or a public or a private uh, interview even in California where she lives. But Ford's attorney insists before she talks about the alleged assault denied by Judge Brett Kavanaugh, the FBI needs to investigate. Plus, she wants more witnesses. The rush to a hearing is unnecessary and contrary to the committee discovering the truth, her attorney says in a new statement to NBC. They're trying to set up a he said, she said scenario and bully her into either testifying on Monday or not being heard at all. Some lawmakers are against a private interview. You can't put the genie back in the bottle and the American people are entitled to hear from both of them. President Trump still reluctant to get the FBI involved. They've investigated about six times before and it seems that they don't do that. They will if he asks. He's the only one who can. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. Now, if this hearing does not happen on Monday, we could see a vote by the middle of next week. We will continue to follow the story on our website, EastTexasMatters.com. All right, we're going to continue our coverage of the shooting that's happening or that happened earlier this morning in Maryland. The press conference just began just a minute ago. We're going to take you live there to listen in on this latest news developing. Responded. Uh, we were on scene just in over five minutes. Uh, arriving law enforcement, fire and EMS units quickly uh, paired up together, uh, got into the building and reported to render for a were appropriate. Uh, treat patients in an attempt to locate a, a, a suspect or suspects. At this time, I can confirm multiple wounded and multiple fatalities. Based on what we know right now, and again, very preliminary, the lone suspect in this incident is in custody and is in critical condition at a local hospital. It appears to be uh, a single weapon that was used, a handgun, uh, and there were no shots fired by any of the law enforcement officers responding to the scene. We do not believe that there's an additional threat anywhere to our Harford County community. We have 
set up a family reunification center with the county executive and our county partners at the Level Volunteer Firehouse. And, and again, this investigation is very early. Uh, I and our office will be happy to give you more information as it becomes available. Again, I ask you to uh, keep the victims of today's uh, tragic event in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, and I also you know, have to thank our fellow first responders. We have responders here from the federal government who were on scene within minutes, the FBI, the DEA, ATF, uh, the state police, MDTA police. Again, and developing story right there out of Maryland. As you heard in the press conference, multiple people dead. At last uh, reported, it was three people dead with multiple people injured. The female gunman, the lone gunman, used a handgun and went inside and shot several people inside a warehouse. She is currently in critical condition. This press conference is continu continuing on our website that is EastTexasMatters.com. Continuing here in East Texas, displacement debacle as the expansion of FM 16 is forcing some Lindell residents out of their homes. Right now, the city is working to widen a four mile stretch of FM 16 near FM 849. One big change, adding two more lanes with curbs. They're also creating a center left turn lane and a 10 foot shoulder to enhance safety in the area. The plans have been 10 years in the making and people living nearby are beginning to see construction. Uh, it, in the future, it's, it's, it's worth it. I know there's a little bit of a dispute on, on the people that's having to move, but it's just, that's part of it. But for those affected, the argument is about uprooting 16 families in one business who've been in the area for decades. In fact, the county will have to pay nearly $53 million to relocate them. The Department of Transportation hopes the construction will increase traffic for local businesses and help stimulate the local economy. The project is not expected to be fully completed until the beginning of 2021. Small businesses in Longview are eligible for health insurance again. It's from the Chamber of Commerce. Health care plans were introduced in 2009, but were scrapped in 2014 after changes in the law. By November 1st, available once again through the Chamber. Partnering with United Healthcare, our, our members, and we have over 1,100 members, of which most are small business owners, uh, will be able to access health care in a way that's not only less expensive, but more than anything, uh, offers so many more products than they would have otherwise. So, if you talk to small businesses, one of the major challenges they face today is health care, health insurance for their employees. It's affecting everyone, but it's hitting them really hard. So for the chamber to go to all this work and to get together with the right people and, and get the government to change the law to make it where they can do this, this is a big deal. They will be able to offer about 20 unique plans that average around 15% less in costs than market plans. And then continuing to look at medical news, a new government report on the health of the nation reveals some troubling trends. The average life expectancy continues to decrease largely due to drugs and suicide. Overdose deaths increased by a whopping 72% and the suicide rate grew by 23%. Deaths from injuries and Alzheimer's disease are also on the rise. Life expectancy in the U.S. is now two or three years shorter, but it's not all bad news. Deaths from cancer, respiratory disease, and stroke have decreased. And happening today, a community forum to get a better understanding of what East Texas dementia patients and their families need. It will be held from 6 to 8 at the Good Shepherd Institute for Healthy Living in Longview. It's an interactive discussion all to increase support for people dealing with the disease. I will be there and I will be hosting the panel myself along with a large group of fantastic people. It will be put on by the Alzheimer's Association. Coming up next here on East Texas Live, a pact for peace. North and South Korea working toward a truce, but there are some stipulations. We'll explain the role the U.S. could play. Also, fall is a few days away and while the heat may be leaving, army worms are on their way. James Wilhite stops by with pointers to keep your land pest free. Keep it right here. You're watching East Texas Live.